They say that Rome wasn't built in a day, but it wouldn't have been built at all without good foundations. What might initially seem as humble beginnings can grow into something massive and world-changing. For example, back in 1981, a young man named Shigeru Miyamoto helmed his first video game. It was called Donkey Kong. It was originally released in Japanese arcades, and it gave us two of gaming's most recognisable icons, directly influencing the childhoods of millions. It was a famous and auspicious first foray into game making for the legendary Miyamoto, one that cemented his status as a true immortal of the industry. But not all beginnings are as well remembered. In this list, we're looking at some of the lesser known examples of where it all began. Industry titans before they became titans, their hearts full of youthful exuberance and heads full of ideas, creating their first games and sending them proudly into the world. Some were successful, some instantly faded into obscurity, but all of them were important first steps towards something great. I'm the currently humble but soon to be titanic Ashton from Triple Jump, and he here are 10 video games that gave industry titans their start. Number 10. Mendel Palace – Satoshi Tajiri If you don't know who Satoshi Tajiri is, he's the founder of Game Freak. If you don't know what Game Freak is, that's the company responsible for Pokemon. And if you don't know what Pokemon is, well, how's life been under that rock for the last 30 years? Basically, Tajiri is the creator of one of the most recognisable and profitable media franchises on the planet. He's kind of a big deal. Before becoming a game developer, he wrote and edited his own gaming magazine. That was named Game Freak 2. One track mind, this one. Anyway, before he gave birth to the yellow lightning rodent, Tajiri developed Game Freak's first game, Mendel Palace, known as Quinty in Japan. In Mendel Palace, players must avoid hostile dolls by flipping floor tiles. You can eliminate the dolls by flipping them into barriers or impassable blocks. And certain flipped blocks will reveal different block types underneath. It's a block flipping enthusiast's dream come true. A game of strategy, forward planning and positioning, Mendel Palace was successful and well received, giving Tajiri a strong foundation upon which he could start to work on his industry changing franchise. Just think, if it weren't for this simple single screen puzzle game, your pencil cases and duvet covers might have Agumon on them instead. Number 9. Hellcat Ace – Sid Meier Sid Meier has the ultimate claim to fame. He invented civilization. Really, it's strange that doesn't get talked about more. And also, just how old is he? Oh, wait, hold on. He's responsible for the Civilization game series. That makes more sense. Seriously, though, you would have heard of this guy. He's the one who puts his name in front of everything. From Sid Meier's Civilization, to Sid Meier's Railroad Tycoon, to Sid Meier's Pirates. It goes without saying that Meier is an iconic developer, and he started out back in 1982 when he co-founded the company Microprose. Many of his early games were flight sims, and his first effort, Hellcat Ace, is no exception. Remarkably simple by today's standards, Hellcat Ace was advanced for its time, allowing players to shoot down enemy fighter planes and bombers in tricky dogfights over open ocean. One thing is for certain though, if Hellcat Ace had been released a few years later, it would definitely have been called Sid Meier's Hellcat Ace. Got me thinking actually, if he assembles a piece of flat packed furniture, does he call it Sid Meier's Bedside Table? What if he made himself breakfast? Sid Meier's Bacon and Eggs? Just a thought. Number 8. Penguin Adventure – Hideo Kojima Hideo Kojima, legendary, unique and wildly regarded as a genius level game developer, is most famously known for the Metal Gear series. His games are known for their wild ideas, innovative gameplay and twisting multi-layered narratives. They are not, however, well known for their depictions of penguins. That's how it all started out for Kojima though. Penguin Adventure for the MSX was Kojima's first game, and the sequel to Antarctic Adventure. In Penguin Adventure, players control Penta the Penguin as he hurtles along icy courses littered with enemies and pitfalls. Some occasional surprises are thrown in too, including bosses, merchants and space fights. He really is an adventurous little penguin, isn't he? The story is fairly simple. Penta needs to bring home a golden apple to cure poorly penguin princess Penguet. Though, come to think of it, this is a Hideo Kojima game, so Pent is probably a puffin in disguise or something. And Penguet is the leader of a secret society of immortals, and the golden apple is actually a dormant fetus of an all-powerful being from a parallel dimension, as long as Penta doesn't start growing a horn. Number 7. The Palace of Deceit – The Secret of Castle Lockmore – Cliff Blazinski 
Referred to affectionately as Cliffy B, Cliff Blazinski is most well known for his work for Epic Games, as seen in Unreal and Gears of War. However, before bringing us Marcus Phoenix and his grim-faced muscular friends, and even before introducing us to Bucky O'Hare's lookalike Jazz Jackrabbit, Cliffy B started developing his first video game when he was just 15 years old. This was a text-based game called The Palace of Deceit, The Secret of Castle Lockmore, and it was later remade in 1992 as a point-and-click graphical adventure, with the new subtitle The Dragon's Plight. If this sounds like classic fantasy adventure type stuff, that's because it is. Players take on the persona of the dragon Nightshade as he attempts to save his race from an evil wizard. He will explore, solve puzzles, and choose from multiple dialogue options when chatting with NPCs. Oh, and the evil wizard is called Garth. Maybe young Cliff just disliked a guy called Garth at his school. Anyway, the Palace of Deceit features no sound or music at all, so put on something suitably dungeony in the background while you're playing. Also, the graphics for the game were created using Windows Paint. Humble beginnings indeed for a veritable rock star of the 360 era. Epic stuff, Cliffy B. Number 6. Girl's Garden, Yuji Naka. Industry legend Yuji Naka was also the man who created an algorithm that allowed a sprite to move smoothly along a curve. Apparently, the obvious next step was to merge a blue hedgehog with that technology, and a gaming icon was born. Prior to his involvement with Sonic Team, however, Yuji Naka's first game was something a little bit different. It was a game for girls. Now, as we all know, in order for a video game to appeal to girls in any way, it must eschew concepts such as violence and adventure, and instead concentrate only on cute things, the colour pink, and relationships. In Girls' Garden, players take on the role of Papri, as she gathers pink flowers in order to win the affections of a boy. Hurry though, because if Papri takes too long, time will run out and the boy will meet another girl instead. Heartbreaking stuff. While Girls' Garden was received as a fun and technically impressive title at the time, some questions were raised about the game's content. Observers asked why the girl was trying to win the love of a boy instead of trying to rescue him, which is what the story undoubtedly would have entailed if the gender roles were reversed. Either way, whatever you think of Girls' Garden, we can at least all agree that it was better than Balan Wonderworld. Number 5. Capcom Quiz Hatena no Daibuken Shinji Mikami Throughout his long and illustrious career, Shinji Mikami has endeavoured to take players to some dark places. Whether that's with classic survival horror, such as Resident Evil and Dino Crisis, or with more recently conceived spook-em-ups such as The Evil Within, he's always got something sinister up his sleeve. Imagine our surprise, then, to find out that the Monster Aficionado's first game was a jaunty quiz for the Game Boy. Capcom Quiz Hatena, no Daibuken, features various characters and locations from popular the Capcom franchises like Strider and Mega Man. The player must move around a game board by rolling dice and answering quiz questions. It's kind of like Mario Party with Capcom characters. Oh, and instead of playing fun mini games, the player has to answer questions on subjects like geography and history. Mario Party, in which you chose not to attend the party because you had to stay home and cram for an exam then. While Capcom Quiz Hatena no Daibuken lacks the visceral shock factor of many of Mikami's latest works, it still shows signs of his ability to build tension and dread. The multiple choice questions are sometimes on a timer that takes the form of a quickly burning fuse attached to what appears to be dynamite. Don't put pressure on me, Capcom Quiz Atena no Daibuken. I can't even read Japanese! Number 4. Raid on Bungling Bay Will Wright a forefather of simulation games, Will Wright was responsible for the Sim City series, along with Sim Earth, Sim Copter, and that other Sim game. Oh, that's right, The Sims. An industry legend, Will Wright has been outspoken on the educational benefits of computing and gaming. He was also the first game designer to be given a BAFTA fellowship, and is an accomplished race car driver. Calm down, Will. Leave some glory for the rest of us, would ya? His first game was Raid on Bungling Bay, in which players pilot a helicopter as it flies over various island maps, taking out turrets and weapon factories. If factories aren't destroyed, the Bungling Empire will create more and more advanced armaments, leading to 
into the player eventually becoming overwhelmed. I know it doesn't exactly sound scary when I say it this way, but the bungling empire means business. Interestingly, the game is what set Will Wright down his future path of detailed simulations. He reportedly had more fun creating the islands than he did playing the game, and started to think that perhaps the public might feel the same way. He then researched city planning and worked on a more advanced building simulation, and the rest is history. Number 3. Puyan – Tokuro Fujiwara Developer Tokuro Fujiwara has quite the pedigree. He was partly responsible for kicking off the Resident Evil series, as the original was conceived as a remake of his 1989 title, Sweet Home. He also boshed together a few early Capcom games, including Bionic Commando and the notoriously difficult Ghosts and Goblins. His first game, however, is called Puyan. Players take on the role of Mama, a mummy pig trying to protect her baby pigs from balloon-powered wolves. Puyan is an accomplished and surprisingly complex single-screen experience. Each level is split into two rounds. In round one, the wolves balloon down to the ground and attempt to climb up ladders to get to the pigs. In round two, wolves attempt to flatten the pigs with a nearby boulder. It's a surprisingly accurate depiction of a balloon ladder boulder hunting method demonstrated by many real-life wolf species. The game has another claim to fame. If you've ever played Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, you may be aware that there are extra ops missions in which you shoot balloons attached to kidnapped soldiers. Ever wonder why they were called Puyan missions? Well, now you know. Number 2 The Terminator Future Shock Todd Howard Todd Howard, synonymous with Bethesda Game Studios and many a hilarious meme, did apparently work for another company before he joined the creators of The Elder Scrolls. But the information on this time is very thin on the ground. As such, we've gone with the first game he worked on at Bethesda. If you're a personal acquaintance of Mr. Howard and have the inside scoop on his earlier programming dalliances, then let us know in the comments below. For now though, prepare for time paradoxes and scary robot skeletons, as Todd was first involved with the Terminator Future Shock. The game features a storyline that went against the canon of the main films, with the player character standing in for a wounded John Connor. It was visually groundbreaking for the time and one of the first FPS games to feature fully 3D rendered environments and enemies. It received mixed reviews upon release, however, mostly because of the lack of multiplayer. Honestly, these reviewers want the moon on a stick, don't they? These days, the only time travel Todd Howard is involved in is taking us back to November 2011 over and over and over again. Sorry, we're legally required to make a Skyrim release joke whenever Todd Howard is mentioned. And I don't make the rules, I just follow them. Number 1. Menace – David Jones do you know what Lemmings and Grand Theft Auto have in common? Well, they're both conceived by the same talented man. It's no exaggeration to say that David Jones has left a massive mark on the industry. Lemmings hugely influenced the evolution of puzzle games. Well, if you need me to explain why that's significant, then I guess with a rock dweller from earlier on. Jones's first foray into the world of development was a game called Menace. This action-packed shooter features classic side-scrolling gameplay and an energetic rocking soundtrack. As players explore such hardcore locations as the Plateaus of Draconia, Tropics of Mace, and Carnage Rift. The game received mixed reviews across the various platforms it was ported to, but the original Amiga version was unanimously praised. Despite having completely different gameplay, the visuals and sounds definitely share a similar feel to Lemmings at times, GTA not so much. Still, who would have thought this cool but humble side-scroller would be the precursor to one of the most all-consuming video game behemoths in history? It just goes to show, every great journey requires the first important step.